All right. Well, well welcome, everyone. Good morning. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, uh, some of the unique solutions that, that we, we have. Um, this presentation is, is really uh, focused in the manufacturing area. Uh, we do uh, sell broadly into a number of different areas, but this is uh, uh, probably most relevant in, in the manufacturing space itself. So I'll give a, a brief corporate summary of uh, SGI. Uh, you know, if you've been around, I've been at SGI for 22 odd years or so. Um, so we've had a, uh, an, an interesting genesis um, and talk to you a little bit about what we're doing today. Um, talk a little bit about uh, some of the problems in commercial HPC with, again, the focus a lot on the manufacturing space. And talk about our, our scale up. Uh, and by scale up, I mean being able to put a lot of processors and memory in a, in a single system image. That is a, a, single, a single image of, of the operating system in, in, a, in a server. And uh, also our scale out solutions. And also talk about SGI and PBS Pro. So we've had a, a very long, long relationship and a very close relationship with, with, uh, with the, the PBS Pro or PBS Works. Um, sometimes they get confused on your naming, but <laughs> that's fine. Just, just like us, we, uh, we've changed around over the years and so forth. Um, so first of all, uh, from an SGI perspective, we're, we're uh, really focused on technical computing solutions. Um, so this is something that we've had for quite a while. Um, there's a lot of folks that do the business side very well, focus a lot on um, availability, uh, making sure that uh, you can get to your applications um, and so forth and your data. Uh, we focus a lot more on technical applications. Uh, one area where we're kind of bridging a lot is, is in this, this middle area of big data. Um, so we're doing a lot of work in places like Hadoop and in, in fraud analysis and those sorts of things as well as we go forward. And so, uh, again, where we focus specifically is on the HPC side, so, so commercial, um, public sector in HPC. Uh, I, I mentioned big data. Uh, that's, a, that's a lot of carryover, as is the cloud space, from the, the, uh, the merger we did with, uh, with Rackable Systems about, it's been three and a half years now since we, uh, since we, we, uh, we merged with Rackable and some of the systems, uh, some of the customers in the cloud space are still some of our largest customers from that standpoint and often listed in our, in our financial reports. Um, so we have big data, we're focusing a lot on Hadoop in memory and analytics. And then the cloud space, um, a lot of public cloud. Um, so, uh, you know, we have roots in, in uh, Google and some uh, and YouTube and so forth, some of the, the uh, earliest uh, customers in the cloud space continue to sell to them today, uh, but have moved into both private and government cloud as well uh, as, we've, as we move forward. And these are just a quick example of some of our customers that we, uh, that we sell to, uh, eBay, NASDAQ, a lot in the autos and also in the defense space as well. Um, do a lot of media work uh, as well, so NBA, um, if you have a droid, your content probably flows through a, a lot of SGI systems as well uh, and handle a lot of content uh, uh, for companies like uh, the, uh, the NBA and National Geographic. And for the most part, we focus on these solution pillars, so around compute, have a number of platforms there as well. Uh, we'll focus on, on our, both our scale up and our scale out solutions on the server side. Uh, in the storage area, we offer a lot of storage solutions. Um, a lot of our software uh, comes over um, that we've had for quite a long time. The, uh, uh, the uh, uh, CXFS and DMF, um, we're, we're continuing to do development. In fact, I've reinvested in that area over the last uh, year or so. Um, and software, um, also an area that we've, uh, we've invested in quite a bit in terms of management and performance. And finally, in our services and support. So we do offer worldwide services and support. So that, that, uh, that's the end of the company intro. Um, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the trends that we're seeing and some of the solutions that we're, we're bringing to bear uh, for customers as well. So some of the f uh, familiar business drivers that, that you might be seeing as well is this, is this uh, focus on um, higher quality. Um, so, so typically, um, when we tell our, our sales reps what kind of customers should you be selling to, what we say is, you know, if the customer in their, in their, uh, in their description of what they do has a focus on quality, 
then that's really a place that uh, we would have interest in selling uh, because that's the kind of solutions we offer. Obviously, there's a, there's a pressure to reduce costs. Um, and so a, a lot of customers have moved beyond physical prototyping, uh, tend to do a lot um, through, uh, through virtual prototyping now, um, and basically putting things together in the computer as opposed to actually building models and having to, to prototype that. And we actually do that ourselves in some of our own ECAD work, uh, do a lot more uh, in, um, uh, as virtual as opposed to actually doing prototypes. And we do both ECAD and and uh, mechanical CAD in terms of some of our, our cabinet designs and those sorts of things as well. So we're, 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 we're practicing these types of things as well. Um, obviously, we're all under pressure to uh, uh, you know, get to the market uh, more quickly from that standpoint, get our, get our solutions out and get ahead of the competition. Um, you know, things are getting more complex, um, so, so we feel the need to uh, um, you know, do a lot more analysis, really understand more of what uh, types of systems we're trying to do. Um, I was, I'm a mechanical engineer by training, spent about, about six years actually doing that work before I went into computers for the Air Force. And when I first came out of school, I, I had a problem where I had to, uh, it was this uh, hemispheric thing that sat underneath of a B-52. And so I, so I had to make sure that thing would not fall off. Um, during flight, it was a part of uh, the global positioning system, you know. So I, I I went in there and you know I was I was I was going to go and start up Nastran and all this kind of stuff to get it done. And one of the old sort of seasoned uh, um, guys there who had been there 20 years, he said, well, you know, just just kind of model it as if it were being held by one screw, and if it holds on with one screw, then it's going to be okay. <laughs> so that's <laughs> so that's the way things used to be. Uh, things have got co quite a bit more complicated. We've got more complex materials. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, certainly uh, just having the opportunity to, to do the analysis actually puts more pressure on doing the analysis. So when, when you, when you uh, uh, have to analyze a new product or develop a new product or certainly anything that, that uh, uh, where safety could be involved, you, you have to do more work from that standpoint. And all this finally results in larger and larger models. Um, so, so these larger models are starting to, to, to stress our capabilities um, in terms of of the familiar two-socket node that, that, we, that we've been comfortable with for quite a while from that standpoint. Um, and so, uh, um, you know, this is, th this is an example. We, we see this quite frequently in both, both smaller customers, so, so there's quite a bit. Uh, uh, there, were, there was some analysis done, um, I think it was from Intel, although I think it was actually funded by the, um, the Council on Competitiveness. Um, and that's um, the fact that there's quite a few small manufacturers in the U.S., some, some, something like 300,000, some, anywhere from like one or two people, you know, to like 30 or 40 people um, that are doing a, a fair amount of work in manufacturing. They supply parts, they, they, they do uh, uh, small designs and so forth and so on. Um, and so a lot of these folks really don't have access to, to, to what we what we call high performance computing. So for the most part, they're doing a lot of their work, as in this example, on a, on a uh, workstation, a PC type of thing, um, don't really have the access to the, the performance capability. Um, and uh, some of them actually try to muddle through. Um, this is uh, one of our pictures of, of, uh, of the most uh, tangled uh, uh, cabling possible. Um, I talked to other people and they said they actually have uh, have even worse drawings of that, or, e or even worse pictures of that. Um, and in some cases, they, they try to cable things together themselves, but you know, introduce a lot of complexity, and now they have to manage that. Um, maybe they have outsourced management, and they have to call someone up who comes in uh, to get that fixed. Um, and certainly, in, in a lot of the small manufacturers, they don't, they don't quite have the infrastructure to actually do some of the work. Um, and even in some of the big manufacturers, which I'll talk about some examples, um, there's some departments there um, that, uh, that are doing either unique things or maybe classified things and, and don't have access to IT or don't, um, uh, don't have the patience to wait for IT to, to come in and, and solve their problem, so they want a more simple solution. Um, so, uh, so some of the things we've done uh, with a number of these customers is uh, what we call simplified HPC computing. Um, so, um, in this case, uh, we create a unified platform that allows you to address different needs and also allows 
in some cases for a customer to get a, an ease of management solution as well. Um, this also allows you to simplify your system, system management uh, from that standpoint. So either you have you know, a single system, um, and I sort of use the, sy the term system uh, loosely from that standpoint. So it may have different components with different architectures, but you can still manage them under one uh, roof, if you will. Um, and also simplified complexity uh, that allows you to, to store your data and get, your, get to your data and your models and so forth. Uh, and and to, uh, really, to really solve the problem, it should have a flexible architecture, so you should have the ability to have, uh, have different, different types of components, different types of architectures to, to make that happen, um, and uh, also have the ability to evolve. So maybe the, the problem gets bigger, you want to be able to add more capability to it. You should be able to do that fairly easily without having to recable and, and, uh, and uh, redesign the whole system. And increasingly, uh, we're seeing more and more of our customers using accelerators. Um, so uh, certainly the, 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 the GPU, we've had customers using FPGAs of all things, but um, certainly the GPUs are, have become very popular um, in a number of areas. Um, and uh, now Intel um, has, has created their GPU, uh, well, not their GPU, but their accelerator uh, called, uh, called uh, Phi um, that's, that's come, up, come about, and so we, we want to be able to use those components as well where they make sense. Um, and finally, all we're trying to do here is, is, uh, is be able to, to do the same kind of work with less cost. So we want to have a reduced TCO type picture. Um, we are uh, x86 based completely. Um, so even though we'll talk about scale out solutions and scale up solutions, they all work on the same code base. So they're all x86 based. Um, so uh, in the previous, uh, in previous generations of our products, we we had MIPS-based processors, then we moved to Itanium, but now we're, we're completely Xeon-based. Um, and actually, in, the last, um, uh, in this last rev of our scale-up platform, actually based upon a, a Xeon EP um, as well from a, uh, from a processor standpoint. And certainly, things like uh, uh, simplified administration does save you cost as well. Um, and uh, also, uh, some of the things we can do in terms of re remote visualization allows you to avoid some of the expensive workstations that you might have to invest in that uh, may only be used for a certain period of time. Um, and so basically, uh, this is uh, how we, we essentially put our, our, our solution together. So there's a number of different parts to this. Um, so for, for what we often call in the industry capacity type computing, those smaller jobs which fit uh, easily into a, a two socket type node and, and you run lots of them from that standpoint. Um, so that's, that's an area. Down here is an area where um, you may have more complex type models and maybe you don't have to run those all the time but uh, may have to run those occasionally. So this is where you might be doing um, uh, multidisciplinary optimization, maybe you're doing complex physics and those sorts of things. Um, and then finally, at the end of the day, you actually want to save your data and you want to be able to get to that and be able to share that between the different architectures. Um, so in the one area, we have a couple of solutions, our SGI Rackable. Uh, these are, um, you know, we sell those both into the cloud, so folks like Amazon and others buy them, as well as folks um, across our H HPC industry as well. Um, and um, that's one of our scale-out solutions. Typically good for, uh, you know, when a customer is looking at, uh, you know, anywhere from a few servers all the way up to several racks. Um, and then our ICE-X platform is our, is our latest generation of our integrated bladed uh, system, uh, specifically optimized for high-performance computing. Um, so they, they, customers who buy them typically are, are buying, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20, you know, up to 40 or 60 racks worth of compute. Uh, when, they're, when they're looking for those types of, uh, uh, types of systems. So again, these are mainly for scale out, uh, traditional scale out type of jobs, capacity type jobs. And meanwhile, if um, you want uh, a more of a capability type job in the scale up area, so this is where the memory requirements, maybe the, um, you know, what you're trying to do with it requires a lot of communication. You don't want to do a lot of communication between nodes along a thin fabric. Um, so you can actually use our, our UV2000 shared memory system um, to, bring, uh, to bring all that data into memory, for example, um, to be able to uh, communicate between the various parts of the, 
the program with, with uh, lower latency and higher bandwidth than you can into a typical cluster. And then at the end of the day, you can use uh, a variety of our storage products. Our, uh, we have our infrastructure storage uh, RAID, RAID based products. Um, and uh, we, we recently announced uh, the SGI NAS product as well uh, that's, uh, that's built on our technology. Um, and then finally, uh, we have a product called Arcfinity, uh, which is, a lot, we call this the, the zero watt solution. So we can basically use it to, to long term store data at, at virtually zero cost. Um, so the, the disks themselves, based on Copan technology, the disks themselves wind down, completely shut off, um, and there's no, no power usage at all. Most other types of systems actually continue to, uh, to use about a watt of power per drive. Um, but with our, uh, our Arcfinity product, we actually uh, uh, turn that, that completely off. And just to show that, that hardware is not the only solution here, um, we also have a software stack that's, that's uh, uh, probably one of the most important parts of this and what, what most, most uh, customers will interface with. Uh, you know, first um, on the, uh, the compute side, you know, PBS Pro, I'll talk a little bit more about this. This is our, um, our, uh, our, our workload uh, manager of choice. Um, so that's what we direct most of our customers to and where we have uh, the majority of our volume. Uh, SGI Management Center um, is uh, our, our management software. Um, so that's, um, so some of you folks are probably familiar with Linux networks. Um, we did um, basically hire the engineering team and purchase the IP from that. That, that is the, um, the uh, underpinning of SGI Management Center. Um, so we, um, we still continue to, to move forward with that product and it's used from both, for both our, our, um, our Rackable, our ISEX, and also our, our uh, UV as well. So that can be used as, uh, as a manager in that area as well. Um, and then finally, we, uh, we support uh, uh, both Red Hat and SUSE and CentOS uh, from, uh, from a Linux perspective. Um, so, so again, um, I did emphasize this at the beginning, but all of these will allow you to manage um, all those different types of uh, architectures as one. So you can manage them uh, from SGI Management Center, you can submit jobs, and uh, they can run on the scale out portions of, the, of your compute environment. Um, they can also run on the scale up portions of your computer environment as well. Um, so again, uh, a, a unified environment, x86 based completely throughout the product line, um, and um, with, uh, with, a, with a unified uh, software stack. And then on the, on the uh, storage software side, uh, CXFS and DMF um, is, is our, is our, our uh, familiar storage software there. Um, so, so as I mentioned previously, we, uh, we have uh, agreed to um, uh, increase the investment in those products. Um, to, so for a while, we were just kind of flatlined in terms of just kind of keeping them going, but we've decided to, to add capability there as well as we go forward. Um, in products like Arcfinity, we've actually bundled CXFS and DMF into the product itself. So you can, you can literally hook it up and then um, start archiving your, your data, um, either from an NFS or a, a SIPS standpoint as well. Uh, and uh, then uh, uh, use the, the, uh, the file systems and the, um, uh, the, the HSM, the DMF, to, uh, to save your files and, and retrieve them. And again, um, nice ease of use environment from that standpoint. So with, with DMF, um, the, uh, a lot of times the users you know, don't even know that where their files are. Um, they can still see their files. In some cases, it may take a little longer to get to them because they might be um, off, off uh, in, in, uh, in an Arcfinity system and they've got to kick the drives up and get them powered up and then bring, bring the file back. Um, but from a user perspective, you know, it looks like it's all, it's all local to them from that standpoint. And so that's, that's basically our, our, uh, our high-end uh, uh, overview of the, the solution itself. So, so you've got scale out and scale up with, with a unified um, software stack and then all saving into um, a, 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 a similar storage type uh, um, backbone as well with similar type of, of, of software. Um, a little bit um, more detail um, on this as well. Um, so uh, this is more the, the mixed workflow case where a customer may have some jobs that, that fit mostly 
um, on the, in a shared memory uh, type of environment. So these are some examples here. Um, it's maybe a little hard to see here with the podium, but you know, more, you know, as I mentioned before, low latency, more higher bandwidth type jobs, uh, maybe where you, where you have a lot of communication between the various threads um, and not, not uh, the, the job can't fit um, on a single node. Um, maybe larger dynamic type jobs or, or transient and multi-physics type jobs as well. So where you have to have a lot of communication between the nodes um, and those would run uh, 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 more slowly on a, on a cluster. Um, and then again on the, uh, um, uh, on the scale outside, either a rackable type product or a nice X type product. Um, and so some of the analysis would be, you know, sort of general purpose um, type uh, 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 computational structural mechanics. It's, that's our, our acronym for, for, uh, for CSM. Um, things like, uh, you know, f uh, frequency response uh, type of information, crash, um, and also um, some, some, um, some transient CFD, but a lot of, of steady, type, steady state type CFD as well from that perspective. And again, we can tie this together into one infrastructure uh, with a backbone and with storage as well. So we, we've, uh, we've run a, a number of different uh, uh, type file systems, our own, Luster, Panassas, um, and G-Luster as well. Um, the, other, the other thing we, we find more and more common with customers um, is this concept of, of of having a, a UV system as, as their, only, their, their only compute system. Um, so, so from this standpoint, we talk about it as, as a big PC. Um, so it, it really looks and acts like a PC. It's a single operating system. So you have any one user has complete access to all the memory and the processors um, in the system itself. Um, and so as an example here, um, uh, we actually have, uh, we can actually hook up uh, NVIDIA quadruplex cards for graphics. Um, so you can actually get your graphics and, and look at your models, um, uh, you know, as you're working on them from that standpoint. Um, you can actually do some of your pre-processing in some portion. This is, each one of these is a, is a, uh, a separate chassis with a, with a number of different um, blades in it itself, but it, it's uh, basically unified as a single system. Um, this, the, uh, the blades above can be running the solvers while the blades down below are running things like um, doing the pre-processing and post-processing of the, of the results as well from that perspective. Um, and then you can actually use your, um, um, your, your quadruplex uh, cards to, to re remotely visualize. So, so then your, your, uh, your engineers or your scientists just need a PC to interface it from that standpoint. So you, you basically, you're integrating everything into, into one single system um, and then um, uh, uh, actually running uh, both uh, um, scale out and scale up jobs within one architecture. You know, so we actually have a, um, our MPI runs on both our scale out architectures but also our scale up architectures and have some, some uh, acceleration capability as well, uh, the way we've designed both the hardware and the software from that perspective. Um, you know, a little bit more, I won't, I won't uh, talk too much in this, but, you know, th this is uh, our infinite storage type product line. This is our, our RAID-based product line. Um, the 5500 is, is, the, is the most cost-effective probably um, for most commercial workloads more commonly used. We, ob we have more uh, specialized type high performance and guaranteed rate type systems, but uh, this is probably um, one of the more interesting uh, storage solutions that we have. Uh, and this interfaces, again, through all of our, our server products and also our, our software and providing a complete solution. A number of different bay type enclosures, depending upon how you want to start and what kind of disk drives you want as well. Um, and I talked a, a bit about Arcfinity. Uh, this was, again, integrating Copan technology that we purchased a few years ago. Uh, and uh, also uh, the concept of a zero watt uh, capability, so actually storing your data off um, and then um, having it accessible, um, but having it accessible more quickly and generally more cheaply than using tape, as a lot of folks do as well. And using a, a software such as DMF, um, the archive files appear as normal files, um, and the, the, the user just feels like they're online all the time. Um, so, so we have a number of uh, different software solutions, so I won't 
uh, talk about all of these areas, but I'll really focus here on the technical c computing space. Um, so this is where we have a, a uh, integrated uh, uh, environment from a software perspective. Um, so I talked a little bit about SGI Management Suite. Um, so this is actually our, our, uh, our, our management software. Uh, so it is a, a GUI-based, um, although we do also have a, a command line interface as well for those uh, folks that, that want that kind of capability. Um, uh, one of the more interesting features that we recently built in, I'll talk uh, a little bit more about this in reference to PBS Pro as well, um, is a lot of our customers are, are starting to, to be concerned with power usage. Um, especially some of our larger customers, so some of our, um, our, our customers that, that uh, you know, are, are buying, you know, 50, 100, 150 racks worth of compute, that tends to be a lot, that tends to be a lot of power draw from that standpoint. So they're, they're really interested in fine-tuning their power usage um, and um, actually understanding how much power they're, they're, they're using. Um, so as opposed to, you know, a lot of us kind of look at um, you know, data sheet, try to add up how much power there. Um, a lot of times that tends to be uh, uh, an estimate um, that, that we and also uh, the parts vendors we use put in there. Um, and so in a lot of cases, uh, the power usage, depending upon your workload, can be a lot lower, um, which would allow you to actually deploy more compute. Uh, so you can, uh, as opposed to scaling your data center to, um, to, to a certain power load, you can make it less. Um, and then you have to monitor and manage it because there could always be that job that um, actually drives your, your, your processors higher than you think. Um, and so, so you, you might actually go over your, your power capability or your power budget from that standpoint. Um, so as a part of SGI Management Center, you can actually set up policies. You can actually maintain um, you know, uh, power capping um, on your processors so you can reduce the amount of power they're, they're using as well from that standpoint. Um, and we do have a number of customers that, um, that uh, really take advantage of that to a, to a very fine degree. They're limited in terms of power, but they want to get the most compute out of it, but they can't uh, overdrive that power capability either. Um, and a number of the capabilities we've added as well uh, over the, the past year or so, uh, we, can now, we can now manage GPUs. We'll be able to manage the, the, phi, uh, the phi processors as they come out as well. Um, we can also manage things like BIOS um, and uh, have, have now added a high availability component to it as well. Um, um, so all these things have been added over the last uh, year or so. Um, there's there's uh, basically three, uh, there's two different additions and an option from that standpoint. So, so standard, um, so about, I don't know, about a year and a half ago or so, we started just shipping standard for free. Um, so, so with this set of features here, you can, um, if you bought a Rackable or an ISEX product, um, then, then you get standard SGI Management Center for free. Um, you can purchase the premium edition and adds a number of other things, you know, GPU monitoring and BIOS flashing um, if you have an ISEX platform. Um, and things like power monitoring as well um, is available in the premium edition. Um, and finally, the power option actually allows you to do what I just described. That's actual power management, um, actually uh, allowing you to um, to set certain thresholds on your power, on the power usage of your, of your processors. And in the future, that'll include things like uh, GPUs and, and, uh, and memory as well as we go forward. Um, from a development uh, perspective, um, we've got a number of different products. Our performance suite, these are actually libraries and tools that, um, that, that we build internally to specifically uh, optimize our hardware uh, for uh, a particular application. So, so these are actually actually built internally, um, and we have things like our own MPI um, uh, that uh, uh, is is actually uh, most efficient with things like our UV platform or ISEX platform. Um, we have products. Um, uh, also, we have a, 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 a universal um, a parallel C compiler uh, as well from that standpoint. Um, and uh, for the most part, we use Intel compilers, um, so, so uh, we've been working them, with them for quite a while uh, on that. Um, and uh, so that's our, 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 uh, our compiler uh, suite of choice. Um, and then also have a number of uh, uh, Rogue Wave products as well and TotalView. Um, so, so we offer and, and work with those uh, vendors as well. 
Um, as far as workload and management solutions, you know, we do support um, uh, PBS Pro, Moab, and, and also uh, Slurm as well. Um, but as I'll, I'll talk about, PBS Works is our, is our, uh, is our prime uh, uh, workload, workload manager. So we do have a, a specific agreement with PBS Pro uh, or PBS Works, and, and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that as well. Um, and so, uh, again, uh, you know, we've had a long, long success with, uh, with PBS Works, um, and one of our premier sites is, uh, is, is right here locally at, uh, at, at NASA Ames with the Pleiades system. Um, so it is a, it's our, our one sustained petaflop uh, system that's out there, um, you know, been in, you know, sort of went from, from four racks um, all the way up to, I think it's 182 racks or so of compute at this point. Um, we will also be implementing, we just recently implemented our ISACs, which is our latest ICE platform there, um, and uh, we will be implementing the uh, Intel Phi processor in that, in that platform as well. Um, and, uh, you, you know, for us, PBS Pro uh, works at, at uh, multiple top 500 sites for us, um, so we have a number of sites out there where we're working with PBS Pro, some in the, um, in the, um, um, the DOD model office as well. Uh, those are other platforms that we've done also running PBS Pro. And so since we're, uh, we're a vendor that tends to scale, um, so, so we'll sell you a single server, but uh, for the most part, we're, we're, we're selling racks and racks and sometimes many, many racks to customers. Um, the, the scalability is one of the most important things uh, from our perspective. Um, and uh, we've had a long, again, a long, a, a long relationships, uh, long relationships with PBS Works. And so uh, both of the companies have a focus on performance. Um, and so we, we really work together in tune um, so that we get a, absolute, absolute performance work behind the scenes as well from that standpoint. Uh, and, and we've been working with uh, a lot of different accelerator environments over the years. So I mentioned FPGA somewhat in, a, um, in jest before, but uh, uh, have done a fair amount of work there, uh, have done a fair amount of work with uh, GPUs, uh, both NVIDIA and AMD, and also now the, the MIC, or what Intel is called, the Phi product. Um, and, um, uh, you know, one of the things, one of our claim to fame in our big systems is being able to to, uh, to deliver a variety of different t topologies. Um, so as opposed to just having a factory type of topology, we have, um, it's either four or five different topologies with, uh, with our ICE platform now, um, a, um, an auto all topology, uh, hypercube, enhanced hypercube um, uh, topology as well. And these are things we work with, with uh, uh, the, the folks at PBS Works and, and they're aware of those different topology type options as well. So it, it gets, gets uh, the maximum performance for uh, various different types of workloads. Um, we also do a lot of uh, work in the government uh, space, um, especially in the secure government space. Um, so things like uh, PBS Pro being certified as EAL, EAL 3 plus um, is really important for some of the customers we work with. Um, it's important for us as well. So we do have a, a EAL 3 plus um, uh, uh, capability uh, with uh, with Red Hat and with PBS uh, Pro um, as well, and so so that's also important for us. Um, and in a continuation, I, I talked a bit about the um, the fact that that uh, uh, we've had a, a, a real focus on power. Um, now, part of that was the the, the rackable legacy, uh, where you know, we had customers with, with thousands of racks. We've got thousands of racks that compute at some of our larger customers. Um, and so, you know, a one to 3% uh, uh, improvement in power efficiency turns into millions of dollars a year when you're, when you're looking at thousands of racks worth of compute. Uh, and uh, so, so in, in sort of the, uh, in, in previous years, we focused a lot on, on, on really sort of driving down, finding the, the, the stingiest fans, that finding the most efficient power supplies that we could get and integrate those. Um, and uh, started again about a year ago, uh, actually a couple years ago, bringing software into that, into that mix as well and really understanding you know, what real power you're using at any one time and actually being able to fine tune that. Um, and so um, we're, uh, we're, we're actually in the process of working with, uh, with the PBS Works folks on, um, uh, 
it, and an ability to to plan um, your uh, your workloads around your power capabilities. Um, so maybe um, you know you want to very finely tune um, various parts of your data center um, so that you can save power in, in certain parts of it for certain parts of the day. But you want to be able to 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 manage that relative to the needs of the users. Um, so we're actually working on a project um, right now. Hope to hope to debut some of that very soon from that standpoint, um, where we're looking at things like workload profiling. Uh, application profiling and also things like uh, power rate scheduling. So really understanding, you know, what the what the jobs are using, so that we can we can most efficiently uh, um, um, schedule those and and use that power as we go forward. Um, the 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 other thing I want to bring up is the fact that uh, we do deploy um, in a, a number of different environments. Um, so we sell into a lot of just traditional data centers, and these could be. Um, either uh, uh, sort of big empty empty rooms that get filled with racks and maybe a raised floor, um, up to co-location -lo co centers um, uh, and those, those sorts of things. Uh, we also have modular data centers. Um, so so we've, uh, we, re we recently commissioned um, a large modular data center in, in West Virginia um, as a part of the, uh, the Department of Energy. Um, so they they needed to create a new data center, didn't want to go through all the regulation to get that done. Um, so we actually did that as, as, as a modular data center there. Um, and so that's just recently come on board as a PUE of, of uh, as low as 1.03 from that standpoint, which means that you know, most of the power you send into the thing is being used to, to drive real work as opposed to, to cooling uh, the parts you have in it from that standpoint. Um, and also CSC in Finland um, we're in the process of, de of deploying a, uh, a large modular data center north of the Arctic Circle. Um, so that's a new one for us, but their, their latest uh, data center is, 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 is going to sit there in some old timber warehouses, basically. Um, and uh, we're, we're actually using our modular data centers to, to do that work. Not actually housing our equipment, actually housing competitors' equipment from that standpoint. And then finally, the, the, the other way we deploy it is in the cloud as well. Um, so we have a product called Cyclone um, that uh, allows customers to come in and, and uh, as opposed to investing in infrastructure, um, they can actually use Cyclone uh, to get some of their, their work done as well, either because um, at certain times of the year they run out of capacity and they need some extra capacity, or maybe they're, they're waiting to get a data center online. Um, and uh, you know they, they need that that extra help or that extra time to bring it online, um, or in some cases um, you know it's their, it's the best solution. It's the most cost effective thing that they can do, um, and they actually buy time, if you will. Um, and um, talk a little bit more about about what we have there. Um, we actually use PBS Pro. Um, that's how we schedule our jobs in Cyclone. Um, itself um, and Cyclone is is both an internal and an external capability. Um, so we, you know, we have the ability to 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 use it for our own needs as well. Um, if we if we have particular benchmarking needs or or any other kind of needs as well, um, and you know, similar to the, the the mixed environment that I've talked about here, where we have both scale up and scale out systems that we support. That's what Cyclone has. Um, so Cyclone actually has that available as well. Um, so depending upon what kind of job, what kind of work you have, um, you, can do, um, you can do a variety of different, different work. Um, and a lot of times it's seamless for the user. So you, do, uh, you know, whatever available compute cycles are there can be used. Um, and we have a, a number of different models there as well. Um, so certainly one of the things since we've, we've had uh, uh, such a history in this, in this area is we do have a lot of in-house Expertise. I think it's like 40 some PhDs that specialize in certain applications, so we can uh, make that available as well. Um, we also provide um, um, software, um, so so a, a number of different uh, um, software offerings are available. Some open source um, and some um, that uh, that are not that are proprietary as well. Um, in some cases, we offer up the platform um, or the infrastructure um, so that folks can just bring in their own data, their own applications, and use it from that standpoint. Uh, and, uh, and then we, we deliver all the system infrastructure for customers as well. And so I'll conclude with a number of different uh, uh, customer successes. Um, so this, I won't go into too much detail here because I'm starting to run out of time, but 
Um, 3M is a customer um, of ours, um, you know, very, very close to home. They're, they're, they're based in the Minneapolis area um, where we have a, a, a fairly large, especially software engineering center and uh, our large hardware engineering center is only an hour and a half away in Chippewa Falls and our, and our, and our factory as well. Uh, and so they deployed um, a UV platform there. Um, this is our, our previous generation, our UV100, and also our, our rackable cluster um, as well um, with a variety of different uh, uh, technologies, um, including virtualization uh, and our Arcfinity uh, product as well. Um, and again, created a, a hybrid environment of all these different parts from that standpoint. Um, and they're, they're doing a variety of different uh, types of applications there from, from mechanical uh, work itself design to CFD uh, and also uh, Accelerus as an example, um, so, so chemistry type, and a number of in-house uh, uh, programs as well. Um, and so again, having the flexibility of, of uh, multiple uh, types of, uh, of um, systems out there, uh, you know, uh, and being able to manage them all um, under one environment is, is a very, very positive thing for 3M from that standpoint. Um, and so they've, um, um, they've been able to implement that and get, get higher efficiency out of their data center. Um, another example is Hamilton Sunstrand. So I actually talked to the Hamilton Sunstrand folks. This is an example I brought up earlier um, where the customer themselves, um, uh, it, was, he, there was, it was one, one gentleman who was both doing uh, engineering work and also having to do his own system admin work. Um, and so he said, you know, uh, and, and he pitched to his management. His, his management came back and said, well, why can't you have a cluster for this job as opposed to um, getting a UV system, which is what, what he bought. And he said, you know, I don't have time to manage a cluster. You know, I've got to do the thing myself. I can't depend upon IT to actually manage that for me. They don't really understand how to do HPC clusters. Um, they may be able to do an, an Oracle cluster, but they can't, can't do Oracle rack cluster, but they can't do HPC. Um, so they ended up buying a, he ended up buying a UV, um, and then he's got, a, again, the big PC concept um, where, where he manages a single version of the operating system, can run all his jobs, all his jobs run um, in an x86 environment, um, and he, he's able to enjoy the, the ease of use capability as well. Um, and these folks do uh, uh, a number of different applications, uh, NASTRAN, um, LSDyn, and ANSYS. Uh, they're, they're building aircraft components, so some of the things they do is propellers, for example, if you take any of the the smaller propeller-driven aircraft, their propellers are probably done by Hamilton Sunstrand. So that's something they've been doing for quite a, quite a while. They're, they're, they're actually known for their expertise there as well. Um, and finally, a, um, a Ramgen, uh, that's it's another um, uh, uh, aero, aero type company as well. Um, so they've done a, 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 a amount of work in, in turbine technology to optimize turbine technology. Um, and so they've done um, a, um, a, a, a similar type of, of environment here from a compute standpoint using visualization as well. Uh, and so uh, they're able to do, a, um, to do their job most efficiently with a, with a hybrid type of environment. And that's my conclusion. Um, is there, a, can, can I entertain any questions? I've got a, a few more minutes, I've got two minutes. Two minutes for any questions. We do have a question, yes. <laughs> no, I it's actually the door. <laughs> uh, my question is really relating to that last um, uh, description of the case of, of users that use uh, shared memory systems uh, yes. ver versus the ICE line uh, of clusters. Um, I. I, I'd like to understand better uh, what leads a, a, a site to make that decision because the shared memory just seems to be just the best thing since sliced bread, pretty much. It's, it seems, you know, from a perspective of HPC, um, it seems amazing to me, I mean, from my perspective. But what makes a site decide to not adopt a shared memory system? And if you can comment just a little bit on that. Sure. Um, um, so for the most part, the... Um 
Um, you know, our, our shared memory systems are more expensive um, than a cluster type system. So um, if you, if you uh, compare um, you know, how many processes you get for your dollar, you'll tend to get less in a shared memory system. Um, so um, you know, what, what happens is that um, uh, you know, depending upon how you, how you look at the, the, the cost from that standpoint, um, you know, a lot of times folks make a decision on cost based upon sort of an, an, an isolated um, um, set of criteria. Um, so they don't, they don't necessarily look at, well, um, it's going to cost more to maintain this or it's going to cost more to, to set it up. And so they, they don't include that in the cost equation from that standpoint. So, so we have, um, and so in a lot of cases um, where they do that is where you have, in the case of Hamilton Sunstrand, um, the gentleman himself was going to be doing, was, the cost was going to be on his back. And so he actually had to go to his management and say, you know, I don't want the, the standard cluster solution that I'm going to get. Um, you know, I, I, I need to do this because that's, I'm going to be, be doing the work itself. Um, and so that's, that's one of the, the core challenges, being able to sort of uh, present uh, the, uh, all the costs and then make their, the, the real cost comparison from that standpoint. Thanks for that question. T time for one more. We had one over here, Bill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, in your customer story, uh, you mentioned they're using a virtualization technology. What's the advantage in their case to using those VMs in the setup? I'm, I'm sorry. What's the? So, what's the advantage of using VMs in their setup? What's the um, purpose? Basically? Yeah, so the, um, uh, in, the, in the 3M case, um, they were actually using VMs to allow them to run uh, Windows. Um, so we don't, um, natively, we don't support on our UV systems, we don't support Windows natively on UV. So in this case, they, but under a, um, uh, in this case, they were using KVM. Under KVM environment, we can support Windows. Um, so that's, so they had a number, so this is common where um, there's, a num there's a set of applications that, that are on Windows um, and then, you know, some of them are on Linux um, and, and you've got to have uh, typically two different environments here. In this case, they wanted to combine them all together, use KVM uh, to actually uh, both uh, serve Windows as well as uh, um, Linux type of environments as well. That'd be great. There you go. All right. Thank you. All right. Very, thank you very much. Yeah, you're very welcome. Thank you.